Welcome to the fourth episode in development of FPX Game Engine. For all of you who don't know me, my name is Ivan Mandic and I'm game developer and programmer. As in each other episode, I will be talking about updates to the engine, so the new stuff that I did in it. Uh, first thing I would like to mention is Newton Game Dynamics. Newton Game Dynamics is an integrated solution for real-time simulation of physics environments. And the reason I pick it is because it's fast and pretty much stable and it gives me everything I need for game development. Also another cool thing about it is that it's totally free. The second thing I will be talking about is fog effect. It wasn't so hard to implement it, it was pretty easy, it didn't took, took me a long time but the effect that I get with it is pretty awesome I can change where the fog starts and where it ends and depending on that I'm deciding on its density also just like in 24-bit pixels I can set red, green, blue and depending on that I'm deciding on color cool thing about fog is that is not using so much processing power but the effect that you get with it is amazing it gives a, just that depth feeling to your scenes it makes them look more alive more realistic I can for example make fake effect of night or bright foggy day as you can see right now It just looks cool and I love it. A least but not last is the Froston cooling. In three-dimensional graphics, the view of Froston is the region of space in the mall world that may appear on the screen. View of Froston cooling is the process of removing objects that lie completely outside of the view in Froston. Rendering these objects would be complete waste of time since they are not visible. In the upper left corner of the screen on the debug panel you can see that it says objects in frosting. Now that is the debug for the frosting cooling. It is counting the number of objects appearing inside of the frosting. Current frosting cooling method inside of the engine is pretty basic. It just takes bounding box of the object and depending on it it calculates is the object inside of the view of Rastrum or isn't it in the future I will improve that system I will make it deal with larger areas, terrains and stuff like that to give you an idea how much this method is efficient each of these tanks has more than 5000 polygons and this scene contains 100 of them so imagine how much processing power is this method saving when it doesn't need to render all of these hundred tanks at the same time but only those which are visible at the moment as you can see this episode is a little bit shorter than the other ones and that's the that's because I decided to make my episode on a different way. Stuff I told you today are not all the stuff I, w I was working on. There are some other things, but you'll need to wait for another episode for it. In the future, I will try to make more of these shorter episodes. Also, one thing at the end, I would like to thank all of you who subscribed. I passed 100 subscribers. I'm thankful for you. That's pretty much all. Here's a guy with me. His name Hello. is Peter. He's my nephew, and one day he will be a programmer. Maybe. <laughs> Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.